I'm Chancellor Makanjuola, and thanks for listening to the Frisco ISD podcast. We love to spotlight students and staff who make a difference in their fields and are also flourishing in Frisco thanks to the various opportunities available to them. Today, I'm chatting with Leah Salvaggio, a first year teacher at Bogart Elementary. Learn how she navigated being a new teacher and her unique approach to teaching her elementary school students. And be sure to stick around after the podcast to hear the latest news from around the district. Welcome to our podcast. My name is Chancellor Makanjuola, and I'm here with our first year teacher. If you could please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Leah Salvaggio. I'm a first year second grade teacher at Bogart Elementary. Thank you so much, Leah. And my first question to you is, why did you decide to become a teacher? What got you interested in education? Honestly, I never really had one of those light bulb moments that a lot of people have. It was something that just always kind of felt right. When I was in second grade, my little sister was in kindergarten, and um, she started school a little bit earlier than me, so I would go with her to her kindergarten class and pass out papers, file things, like make sure their art was set up. And then I coached gymnastics through high school, and I applied to TCU, which is where I went for both my degrees, and they had an excellent education program, so everything just sort of like flowed together and seemed like it was going to fit, and so I couldn't really imagine myself doing anything else. That's so cool. And so basically right out of college, like no gap year in between, you just decided after graduating, you went straight into Frisco ISD. Is that correct? Yes. Awesome. So I did, I actually did a five-year program through TCU. So I got my master's right after my undergrad. And then from there, I went straight to Frisco, straight to Bogart. Oh, cool. And yeah, that leads into my next question is, what do you like about working at Bogart Elementary? Oh, so many things. My favorite thing is definitely the people. Um, mostly my team. They are so awesome. We spend so much time with these people and I couldn't imagine like not having such a supportive group. We have all seen each other at our highs and our lows. You go through a lot as a teacher. You know, even my team lead who's been teaching for four years, she still is open and honest with us when she's having a bad day. Mm-hmm. And it's so great to have support in a judgment-free area to work in. I'm the kind of person that asks a million questions And I never feel, like, bad about asking a question or, like, I never feel embarrassed about not understanding something. Even if it's, like, I don't understand exactly how we're supposed to do the math, you know, like, I'll ask them in planning and we'll go through it on the board. Like, they're just such an amazing group of people and we're all around the same age area. And so it's really fun because we, like, have so much in common inside Mm -hmm. and outside of school and they're really great people. It sounds like you're in a very supportive environment, too, because yeah, sure. it is good to be in a place where you can, like, ask questions, ask for help, and not feel judged or feel like you're going to be reprimanded in some way, like, you should know this or something like that. Right. So. Like, there's a million things we're all still learning, and so mm-hmm. it feels really good to be able to, even, like, admin, you know, I can go into my AP or my principal good. and be like, I'm I'm confused, you know, and they're really awesome. So everybody there is super helpful, super supportive. It's a great place to work. Thank you. And that also leads me also to another question I was going to ask is, what have you learned in your first year as a teacher? So much. (laughs) There's truly nothing that can prepare you for your first year of teaching. Student teaching, like, you know, it gives you an idea of what you're going to do, but there is nothing like standing up there with your own class of 24 kids. There's just so many more, like, decisions and spur-of-the-moment things you have to, like, do and... It's crazy. So I've learned a lot this year. But I think the biggest thing that I've learned is how important it is to set boundaries and have a productive structure in my classroom. When I came in, I wanted the kids to just have fun in my class and create that, like, warm learning environment. And I wanted them to like school. They're second graders, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to feel like we were doing so much work and it was boring. But I think that through creating that, I lost a lot of like the structure and the boundaries that you need to have as an as a teacher and I realized it was probably like three four weeks in um one of my kids she came up to me during math stations and she showed me a picture she had drawn during math stations Mm -hmm. it was a beautifully drawn picture but it was not what we were supposed to be doing (laughs) you know in math stations they're supposed to be doing math and Mm -hmm. I'm pulling small groups and the fact that she felt so comfortable with me that she showed me that she was off task and wanted to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And I said, 
baby, did you do this during math? She said, yeah. Like, didn't see a problem with it. And I was like, okay, this is on me. Like, I didn't create that boundary that, like, I'm not just your friend. Mm -hmm. I'm an authority figure. And, like, you do have to follow the rules. It's just hard. I don't like to see them sad or upset. And I don't like to make them upset. But I think this year has really taught me, like, they do thrive on structure. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a big lesson for me to learn is, like, it's okay to have those boundaries and to set up that structure and to teach them about logical consequences because that's the only way that they're going to learn. That's good too, because that also teaches them to respect you too Mm -hmm. as the teacher in the classroom. And like, you know, it helps you maintain and control the classroom as you just said. The first time they said no, I was like, like they said no to me. And I was like, wait a second. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think you guys are supposed to say no to me. So it definitely took a while and like a lot of building with this group because I didn't start off that way. So I'm excited for next year to like immediately start off with that boundary of like, I love, you know, learning in a fun way, Mm -hmm. but we need to, you know, remember that I am in charge. I'm making the decisions, you know, that like respect peace and that like boundary. Yes, that's very important. And I'm glad you were able to establish that boundary with them. And I also wanted to know, how have you seen your students grow academically from the beginning of the school year until now? Oh my gosh, it's crazy. I feel like I didn't see, you don't see them grow like every day. And then you have those little moments, you know, when you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just did that. Like, mm-hmm. and you look at them and you're like, aren't you proud of yourself? You know, uh, in reading, like I had a kid come in and he didn't go to Bogart for kindergarten or first grade. So this is his first year at Bogart and in the district. And he was pretty low on reading and he has grown like more than a year's worth Mm -hmm. just working on sight words, phonics, fluency, like all of it. And it's one of those things where I didn't feel like he was growing, you know, every day I was like, but he's still so behind. And then we do DRAs, which is like the way that you test their reading. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I looked at his beginning of the year DRA and then I just did his end of year and I was looking at it and I called him over and I was like, do you see this? Like, you couldn't even read these words before. And now you read this like absolutely perfectly. So it's really awesome to like reflect on it and reflect on it with them. I don't know if I ever growing up had people point out like, look how much you've grown, mm-hmm. you know, and I feel like that's really inspiring for them. And like, I'm really proud of them. I want to celebrate them. I want to talk about it. And so I think that's been the best part is, like, being able to look back on where they came from, you know, and, like, they solve math problems, and you're like, oh, my gosh, like, they did three-step problems on their, like, some of them are on three-step problems, and I'm like, yeah, a couple months ago, do you know that you couldn't even solve a (laughs) one-step? And, like, look at how much growth you've made. So you can see it in all subjects, all aspects, and it's really great. I can see the excitement too coming from you. I just love that. them. <laughs> oh, that's nice. And um, a, a broader question, more so, is like you, you've had your time like working at Bogart for this first year, but what do you like about working in Frisco ISD? So, why why did you decide to choose this district instead of others? There's a couple of things I love about working at Frisco. One of them is our curriculum is set up where there's a lot of small group instruction time, and that's been like an adjustment for sure because we have like the mini lesson, which is only supposed to be 15 minutes. And I was so stressed out at the beginning of the year. Like, but how are they going to learn everything in 15 minutes? And it's not about mastery in that 15 minutes. It's like, okay, here's like the base. We're going to lay it out for you. And then you get to pull kids for small groups and really like hone in on like where they're at. And I think this is a really great structure because – My student teaching school, I pulled small groups, but it was for the kids that were, like, significantly below level. And this is great because no kid goes through the cracks. Mm -hmm. You know, you're meeting with every kid at their level, with other kids that are at or around their level. Um, You get to read with them. You get to do math with them. And I think it's really great because I can see that my kids are learning a lot, like, in the small group environment. Mm -hmm. And they're able to talk to each other and they're, like, at that same level. And so I love the fact that, like, we have specific time for small group, and we pull every kid, and, you know, we're helping those lower kids get up to grade level. We're working with those grade level kids to make sure that they're understanding the content to the fullest extent, and then you get to work with your high-level kids. You know, I have kids reading on fourth and fifth grade levels, Mm -hmm. and just because they're reading higher doesn't mean that they shouldn't be worked with. Mm -hmm. And so it's really cool to, like, push them to a whole new level as well. 
great too. So basically, it's the curriculum that was a big part of like what st- yeah, stands like out. How we how they set it up. Yes. Yeah. And then also, Frisco is a very intense and hardworking district, mm-hmm. which I really love. I like that we're academically competitive, and that I feel like every staff member and everyone I've met, like in the admin building or when we do the reading academy stuff, like everybody is very focused on not how can we just get our kids to grade level but how can we really set them up to succeed and I it's really great to just work in a district where like they want you they want their teachers to always be getting better you know it's not just one of those like oh you're a first year teacher like you need to learn it's like everybody's still learning and everybody's working hard and I like being held to that standard Great. And also, so first year teachers in Frisco ISD have a mentor. And so who, what has that looked like for you? Who is your mentor at your school or within the district? My mentor is absolutely amazing. Her name is Miranda and she is on my team. So she also teaches second grade. Mm -hmm. Um, She is my age and she's a second year teacher, which I'm sure is probably scary for her to get that. Like (laughs) you're going to be a mentor, you know, you've only taught for a year, but she is absolutely amazing. She's everything I'm not, which is perfect. She's organized, which is something I struggle with. <laughs> you know, like, she's on top of it. She, She's just amazing. Um, so she really helped me in the beginning of the year get, like, organized. I was struggling of, like, there's so many papers to grade. Or there's, you know, we're getting all of these papers for the next week. And I, I didn't know where to put them. So they're just, like, stacked on my cabinet. You know, so she really took the time. And she didn't have to. But she, like, made a schedule with me of, like, this is what you're going to do every day to prepare for the next day. These are the stuff you should do, like, during your breaks to prepare. Like, she went above and beyond, and she is so kind and graceful in everything she does and how she handles everything. And I look up to her in a teaching aspect and in her personal life. I love the way she carries herself, the way she talks to people, the way she talks to her students. And her class is very structured in a very positive way. And I think when I was, like, trying to learn how to do that, she was a great person to look up to her kids love her they have a ton of fun in her class they're amazing but at the same time she stands up there and they quiet down Mm. you know she tells them to line up they line up and watching her teach and do that is really inspiring and has helped me learn a lot I couldn't say enough good things about Miranda Miranda if you're listening (laughs) I love you that's great and it's great to have like an example of that for your classroom if that's how you mo- want to model your classroom after yeah. and then also have your own special touch to it as well because mm-hmm. like it's your classroom too. right so. and also so because even though you're still in your first year but you're nearing the end of your first year as a teacher mm-hmm. what advice do you have for current um prospective teachers that are about to like enter into their first year as a teacher or looking to become a teacher and this might be your first mm-hmm. their first year what advice would you give to them have grace on yourself. Uh, Lots of people will tell you, you know, be kind to yourself, have grace. But like, really, there are so many times where you don't feel good enough. Like there's so many times where I've gone home and been like, I, you know, I could have done better, but you can't beat yourself up. Like this is our first year. We're meant to learn, you know? So like really going in knowing that like, it's okay to make mistakes and to make sure that you grow from them Um, also to have an open mind. There are so many things that I said to myself I would never do in college. You know, like I don't like that strategy or I don't like that behavior management. And then you get to a class and there's 24 of them that are so different and you're like, oh, maybe I do have to try this. I didn't think it would work. So like just having an open mind and trying new things and being okay with trying something and failing and then trying something else. You know, I feel like I don't know if it's because I was a competitive gymnast that I'm, like, so okay with. I'm going to try something. If it doesn't work, we move on. Um, but I think that that's been really helpful is, like, you know, be brave. Try something. And if it fails, that's okay. You know, these kids, they don't notice those kind of things. They love you. And, you know, as long as you're doing your best every day, they're going to want to do their best. So just show up. Try every day. Have an open mind. You'll get through it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Now stay tuned for the latest updates from around the district. Here's a look at news from around the district. The school board election has come to an end with Sherry Salas elected into place six and Keith Maddox elected into place seven. 
Official results will be canvassed on May 15th, and the winners will be recognized during the June 10th school board meeting. Graduation is right around the corner, and the class of 2024 will make its way across the stage at the Star on May 17th through May 19th. For details about each school's graduation, visit friscoisd.org 